Hello everyone, my name is Daniel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a home equity line of credit. I'm gonna look at what it is, how you go about getting one, how you know how much you can get, and a lot of other questions that I commonly get whenever I'm dealing with a customer who is obtaining one, or at least has questions about them. I'm gonna talk through all those things, so by the end, you'll be an expert on a home equity line of credit. So if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe, and I'll be sure to get some more videos out that are just like it. So I hope you enjoy. All right, so the first thing is, what is a home equity line of credit? So going forward, I'm gonna to refer to it as a HELOC, just that's what we call it in the industry. It's a lot easier to say as well, but just know if I say HELOC, that means home equity line of credit. So what is a home equity line of credit? Simply put, it is a secured line of credit that uses your house as the collateral. So it's tied into your house. It's going to be in either the first or the second lien position, depending on if you have a primary mortgage already. And in most cases, it has to be on your primary residence. In some instances, you can put it on a second home, but from what I've seen in the industry, you aren't allowed to put one on an investment property. It has to be on either a first or second home. In most cases, there may be some exceptions. So it is a variable rate product which means it is tied to the prime rate. So as of this video, the prime rate has been climbing up all year long. And the rumor is that it's not gonna go up anymore, but who knows? And with it being a variable rate product, that means as prime goes up, then your rate goes up as well. But if prime goes back down, then your rate on that goes down as well. So just know that it is a variable rate product that is linked to prime. Another thing about this product is that the rate is usually lower than most other products that you can get, especially compared to say a credit card, which is another line of credit. And the reason is because it's tied to your house and the bank knows that you're gonna pay to protect your house. The odds of you defaulting on it are very low. It had to be an extreme circumstance. So a credit card is an unsecured product is tied to nothing except your credit. But a home equity line of credit or a HELOC is tied to your house. So the rate is always gonna be better on that than it is on a credit card. So how do you get one? Or at least how do you know how much you can get? So this is one of the most important pieces that I can tell you in this video. The way to determine how much you can get is based on a formula. So the mistake that a lot of people make is to say your house is worth $200,000 and you have $100,000 left on your mortgage. A lot of people call me assuming that they can get a HELOC for $100,000. And that's 90% of the time that's not the case. Here's the formula that most lenders use as a standard. So you take the appraised value of your house, you multiply that by a factor. Usually it's 80%. So just for this video, I'm gonna say it's always 80%. So you multiply the value of your house times 80% and that gives you a number. Now you take that number, then you subtract what you still owe on your house, just say on a mortgage. Whatever's left over, that is the most that you will be able to get on a HELOC. So for example, let's say your house is worth $200,000. You still owe $100,000 on your mortgage. So you take $200,000, you multiply that by 80%, that gives you 160,000. Then you subtract the 100,000 that you still owe in your house, and that gives you a difference of $60,000. So in that example, the most that you could get on the HELOC is $60,000. So that's the formula, but that's not the only thing that determines how much you can get. Another factor is what your credit score is. A lot of times lenders will limit how much you can get if your credit is within a certain parameter. And then even a third factor is your debt to income ratio. Now, most lenders will use just 45 to 50% debt to income. And all I mean is, as you take your total income and you take your total debt obligations and you say what percentage of your income is paid towards debt. And then if say that number is 40%. So for every dollar you make, 40 cents of it is going to a debt of some kind. A lender will limit you, even if you have a lot of equity in your house and you have excellent credit, you will be limited if your debt to income ratio is gonna go above a certain percentage 
again, typically 50%. And so even if you could, based on the first two factors, get a HELOC for $100,000, you may get limited based on whatever your debt to income is. So that's important to know as well. But those are all the factors that go into how much you can get for a HELOC. So the next question is, why do people get one? Why are they so popular? So I will say these are extremely popular uh, where I am, and, and I'm a big fan of them myself. But the most common reasons are really threefold. Uh, the first is for home improvement. So if you have a big kitchen renovation that you want to do, redo the garage, refurnish your room, anything like that, a HELOC is the most common method used to do those renovations because uh, you have some money available to you in a loan. You can take from it, pay it back, take from it, pay it back. Once you have it, you have it. So you can use it for ongoing expenses for a home renovation. The second main reason people get one is for debt consolidation. Say you have multiple credit cards and the average interest rate on them is 20%. And then you consolidate and pay off all that and put it into a HELOC where your rate may be 9%. It makes a whole lot of sense because your payments are much lower versus the credit cards. So debt consolidation is a popular method. And another popular reason to get them is for an upcoming purchase. You have something like a ski boat you're trying to buy, or you know you're about to have to buy an air conditioning unit, um, or help fund college. Those can be used for any of those things. So keep in mind, if you get a HELOC, you can use it for whatever you want. Once you have it, you have it. The lender's not going to ask you questions about why you're using it every time you want to take a draw from it because it's available to you. What's done is done. So that's important to keep in mind as well. So the next question is, do you have to pay to get one? Now this could vary. Some lenders will have some sort of program available where the lender will cover the closing cost for you so you don't have to pay those. But, but there are going to be closing costs involved with getting a HELOC. These would be things like title work, um, attorney's fees. It can be for an appraisal or any version of an appraisal that is used. Um, it can be insurance purposes. Uh, so there'll be a number of things that go into closing costs for a HELOC. So be sure to check with your lender if there's a way for them to cover the closing costs or if you have to pay it all yourself. And that one varies. And then once you have it, another popular question is, do I have to pay the full amount? for what I got, the answer is no. If you got a HELOC for say $50,000 and it takes you several months to make any kind of a draw on it, you're not paying anything on that 50,000 that's available. You only pay whenever you actually take a draw from it. I get that question all the time, so I wanna address it here. You only make payments if you take a draw. Now, how much do you pay? Some lenders require a 1.5% payment on the balance some require a 3% payment, some only require interest only. You, you'll have to just check with your lender to see what's going to be a required monthly payment once you do take a draw. But let's say you take a draw of 10000 and you have 50000 available, you're only paying interest on that 10000 not on the full 50. You only pay interest on the full balance of what you actually take out or withdraw from the HELOC. Another question I get all the time is how long do they last? Now, in the, in, the, in the banks that I've worked at, I've worked at several, that, the answer to that question is anywhere from 10 to 20 years. So the draw period is usually 10 years, and then there's either the end at that point or there's an additional 10-year payback period. So all that means is you have 10 years to access it in this example. So you can draw from it, pay it back all you want to within that draw period. But if then there's a payback period, then it's no longer available for withdrawals. Now, when I say payback period or withdrawal period, I don't mean that you're not paying on it during the initial 10 years. You are, as long as there's a balance. But with the payback period, that's only for payments and no more draws at that point. But you'll want to check with your lender to see if it's a 10 year or a 20 year or something else, because they do vary depending on the lender. So what about an annual fee? If you say you don't have a balance on it, but you do just keep it for just in case, do you pay an annual fee on it? Well, as is the common thread so far in this video, it, de it depends. It depends on the lender. Um, I currently work for a lender that does not charge an annual fee, but I have worked for other ones that did charge an annual fee, which would usually be somewhere between $50 to $150, just depending. Uh, because if keep in mind, if a bank 
lends you this as a product and you don't use it, the bank is actually losing money because uh, they still have to keep a certain amount you know, available for use in a reserve fund. So if they're not making any money by lending this product, it makes sense for them to charge you an annual fee. Again, just check with the lender to see what's available and how much it costs. And so what about getting a fixed rate? So I mentioned earlier that this is a variable rate product, but is there a way to make sure that you lock in a rate? Because after all, at least during this video, rates have been going up a lot. And so if you're worried about that, can you lock in a rate? Well, check with your lender again, as I've said many times, but some lenders will have a way to take your existing balance on a HELOC and then lock it in to a fixed term, fixed rate loan. So let's say you have a HELOC for $50,000 and you've drawn 30,000 of it. Some lenders will let you take that 30,000 and then lock in a fixed rate, fixed term for the remainder of the HELOC. So check with the lender on how long you can take it out and what the rate is. But usually they'll let you lock in the rate for as long as the HELOC is in existence. So let's say you've had it for three years and it's a 10 year HELOC and then you lock in the rate at three years. Typically the remaining seven years are what's available to you for that fixed term loan. So just check with your lender on that. But a lot of them do have a way to lock in a rate, not up front, but once you make a draw anyway. So that is a good question to ask if you're concerned about interest rates continuing to go up. But on the flip side, if, if we have indeed maxed out our rate increases that the Fed has been doing over the last year, if they start to trickle back down, then if you've locked in a rate at this point, just say as of this video when rates are high, then you don't get to take advantage of the rate decline that could potentially happen. So it's just important to know those things up front, but that doesn't mean you have to do all of it or none of it. You can do a portion of it. So you don't have to lock in the full thing. So keep that in mind if you're concerned about rates going back down, but don't want to miss out on the lower rate. So the last question I'll answer on this video is, can you deduct the interest that you pay on it? As of now, no. So for the longest time you could, but several years ago under our last big tax reform bill that was passed, that was taken off the table. The home equity interest that was accrued on these types of loans, those are no longer deductible. So that's, that's separate from a mortgage. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just HELOC for right now. But as of this video, you cannot deduct the interest um, on your taxes on the HELOC. So keep that in mind. It could change. Tax laws change uh, pretty frequently. So my answer to that question could change depending on what the latest tax laws do. So keep that in mind as well. So with that being said, I hope this really helps. Those are the most common questions that I get for HELOCs, especially on how to get one and the formula used. I hope you get a chance to really review and look at the notes that I've made on this video to help you. It's a great product. I'm myself, I'm a big fan of them. So if you like this, be sure to subscribe, ask some questions on it, provide any comments, and I'm happy to help. Be sure to check out some of my other videos as well and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.